So today we're looking at a recent acquisition of mine, a Sharp MZ80A from 1982. They've got this quite cheaply locally because it's got a number of faults. So this has an integrated keyboard as you see. It has a tape player for recording and loading software and a 9 inch green screen CRT monitor. Now it does have a fault with the screen where it gets smaller towards the bottom I need to fix and the computer did have blown capacitors as well which I've replaced. That's very common for that to happen to 80s microcomputers. Next we'll look at the connections at the back. So looking at the back we've got the power switch, power in, frame ground and we've got this blanking plate. I've lost one of the screws so it's kind of hanging down. I'll go get that in focus. Uh, there was a printer card installed where the ribbon cable came out of there. I'm still looking over that because I need to try and get that working. And we can see the model number again, MZ80A, Sharp Personal Computer. And as mentioned, it's a UK version, 240 volts. And we have the reset volume and brightness controls. Oh, by the way, the loudspeaker is underneath the keyboard. And it does seem to hum... Uh, that's quite a normal thing that people have mentioned. So if you hear humming from this computer, other than the high frequency CRT sound, that's normal. And if you see those two circular blocked off holes there, that's apparently for upgrades that never happened or something to that effect. But of course you can remove that blank and play and use those holes. So I'm going to probably use that for the digital player connection. A really neat thing about this computer is you can just remove two screws from the bottom and it lifts up like a car almost and it has a support handle as well which you can lift down and put in place so I can do that there we go so you've got the keyboard you've got the main board down here you can see the RAM there's a ROM and some other chips you've got the power supply you've got the CRT board you've got the cassette player and there's a bit more of the main board as well the CRT and the controls at the back so a big problem with computers like this is they accept cassettes and I don't have any of the cassettes you can download cassette images online but you need a way to get them into the computer so I made a circuit so I could connect up a digital player with the tape images for details on my site but let's power up the computer it may take a few seconds to come to life. There is a fault with the CRT where the image is smaller towards the bottom, so that's another thing I need to fix. Apologies for the reflection, and um, it may look like it's flashing, that is the camera, not the computer. There we go. So this kind of computer only has a few commands built in, which is the monitor program. One of the things we can do is load a machine code program. So we're going to use the L command, then on my player, Need to wake it up okay so we press return or carriage return as they call it press play on the uh, uh, player and it should start loading it shortly also i won't show the full loading because it takes a couple of minutes but we'll just make sure it attempts to load it from the player there we go so i'll skip to when it's loaded okay so the game has now loaded and press a key and press again now unfortunately with the ATA it doesn't have separate cursor keys so you have to shift it so this is going to be annoying to play we just bear the controls oh yeah so I'm not going to do it one handed I'm to hear the sound if I turn that up or down let's try again let's just Okay, it's space. Yes. One of the most frustrating games to play, and then you've got to shift the cursor keys, and also do this one handed, but yeah, this is a demonstration. So I'll power off and show you inside, and just see the circuit that I made. So full details are on my side, and I'm pretty sure it's not too easy to see, but basically I've made this circuit down here which recreates 
what's inside the MZ700. Let's get to focus. Um, and I've just got this socket just so wired up to go to my digital player, but basically it gives you a um, line in and line out essentially, and then you can load software from a digital player and record to it also. Again, full details on my site.